Hey guys, it's Emma here, and today I'm going to do a different type of video than usual. I'm going to be doing a tutorial of sorts while I make a Minecraft skin. So I'm entering a contest, this contest. Make sure to check out um, Lila the Fish. Uh, she's a really good skinner. And I have to use this palette, um, and mainly this palette, to um, as a center focus. And it has to be sort of Valentine themed, I guess. Um, because that's the palette I got. I think I'm going to make the hair either this or this. I'm going to go with this color. Um, so I chose that because, um, I chose that color for the hair because it contrasts well with the other colors. And since this is darker, if I need to like separate anything, I can just use this color in the outfit. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do the hair and then I'll meet you, I'll check with you guys after that. Okay, so so far I've decided on this for the hair. Um, I wanted to have one in the front and one in the back to give it a more like playful look, I guess. And um, so yeah. And then I add this just to add to that. And, um, so then I'm going to start working on the outfit. So those two are next to each other up there. Um, my, sorry, my voice sounds weird right now. <laughs> or is it these two? Okay, it's those two. So can you use this here or this here? Okay, I'm going to use, definitely going to use one of these. I'm going to go with the lighter because I already have the darker up there. I'm not exactly sure what I want for the outfit yet. Okay, so before I move on and decide like colors and stuff, I'm going to first shade the hair. Because I feel like that will give me an indication of like how the other color should be shaded. So for my shading, um, I'm not going to give you guys like a step by step. It's a huge shift, <clears throat> which this video is supposed to be talking about. So I'm going to take my base color. And I sometimes like to go darker with it. And I think um, going a little bit darker with this color will help. So I'm wanting this to go towards a more pink color. So I'm going to make a darker version of this to go more towards red. Because it's darker. So it's in the opposite way that I'm wanting to go, if that makes sense. And then, sorry, I need to redo that so then you guys can see it better. So I'm going up to make it go red. I don't know what editor you use, but this is an alternative to on Skindex. They have like X and Z. Um, I'll show at the end how it would look if you used X and Z, and show how it really doesn't have the same magic, I guess, as it would otherwise. So then I'm going to go and darken it, and I'm going to bring it towards more saturation, because um, the darker color is, usually the more saturated it is. Or at least I read that once. <laughs> um, so... It's fine if I make a couple mistakes right now. And then, so the second color is going to be that pink. And then the third I'm going to use to go more to the left. And more towards the pink. So that's basically how you hue shift. But I'll keep showing you guys just so you can really get a grip on it. Get a grasp on it, I guess. So, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to bring it more towards lighter color and bring it down. Okay, I don't really like how that's looking right now. I'm going to try to make it go more towards purple. Okay, so I adjusted it a little bit because I thought these two colors were close, too close together, so I made it a little bit lighter. Um, and now I'm going to... Take, I really like this skin editor because you can editor because um, you can like get a palette from it. So what I mean by that is like it's all right here. And if you have a hard time choosing colors, 
it helps to find like a palette online like just search up valentine's color just search up something like valentine's color palette and there's a lot of options and you can take that into um like i usually wouldn't think about this but this could be one um something like that and just find one that or you could search up anything else and then to get that palette you would download it download this image and then you download this image and then well for this website you don't you wouldn't have to do this but you can just take these but for like an image or something like from this unless it pops up and shows the colors already okay it doesn't so you would have to download that image and then go to color from image I use color picker online I use um, imagecolorpicker.com and I just upload the image and then you can click on it and then copy and paste this into it so that's if you have and you want to make sure that people know that you use the palette um, or that like you're inspired by it so now I'm going to shade the back so as you can see like we started with a more red color with more pink more and more until we ended up there so the difference there to there so we went more towards the gray the less saturated zone as we got lighter um and it might be i think skindex the color wheels a little bit flips so just go more towards white and um, as you can see like a, a bright color versus a non-bright color <laughs> basically the more gray the color gets the less saturated it is Another question I get asked a lot is how to shade the top. For me, it's very simple. I just, um, I drag it up and then I just keep it like that. Um, I don't, I don't really mind, like, that, but some people, some require a more, like, complicated pattern because there's more stuff on the top. And if you need help, you can always comment below and I'll, I can whip something up for you. And, um... And some people do different shading for the bangs, I just do the same because uh, that's just the way I prefer. I mean, I think skins that don't do the same look good. I just, for me, that's what I like to do. Okay, so that helped me sort of see like where I want the colors to go more towards. So I want this color to go more towards purple and same with this color because otherwise it'll clash a lot with the um, pinkish color. Um, so I need to make sure to do that, and just having a good idea beforehand really helps. For shading the hair, you want to make sure that the shading is vertical, like up and down, like right here, because you can do horizontal shading, but I just really prefer vertical shading, because I feel like it, um, you know, hair falls down, it doesn't fall to the side, unless, like, put it that way, but, um, so that's why I personally do it, but if you have a shading and it's more horizontal, then go ahead and do that. Um, some people have all types of shading, which is just the way I like to do it, so I'm not telling you what's right or wrong. I'm going to shade this pink first, but I want it to be the, a light pink, a lighter pink, um, to going towards purple, because this will be darker. But I am going to make... This is supposed to be a bright palette. I'm going to. I don't want it that it's just overpowering. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm creating. Since she said we can hue shift, she never said that we can can't hue shift darker. So remember that if you have a base color, you can always go darker, not just lighter. So because sometimes if you notice your color getting too light, you can start with the darkening tone. Like if I would have started. If I wouldn't have darkened that, it would have been one shade lighter, which isn't necessarily bad. I just feel like it fit better with the tone it's at. And don't ever be afraid to readjust your colors because, like, go back and do it again at the end because um, if you want the best results, then sometimes you have to do things like that. 
So for me, for the close shading, I sort of just do a modified version of the hair shading. Well, not exactly. Yeah, it is a little bit different, but um, not everyone has to do this. This is just what I do. And um, so just do what works best for you. Some people have completely different shading. Um, for mine, it's more cartoony, not really the most realistic, but there's nothing wrong with that. So see, I'm pulling more towards the white, and I made it more purple. And then I'm going to pull more towards white and more towards purple yet again. And then now I have this. So that's what we have for the short shirt so far. So whenever I'm doing a pattern, I follow the same shading, except I don't, um... Yeah, I follow the same shading, basically. Uh, it just gets harder whenever they're different colors to keep track of exactly what what it is, I guess. Now I'm going to make my next color by taking that second color, making it more, more um, desaturated, and pulling it more towards purple. You want to make sure that it doesn't blend in with your other colors. So, so far I'm good. I just got to be careful with this next one. So I did the same thing, and now, okay, I think that's different enough, like you can tell that it's a different color, so I'm fine with that, but I might make it, um, okay, I don't really know if that changed, but in my mind it helps, so. I might just use these colors again to make sure it really shows the difference. Even though I would be following my shading, sometimes you have to break the rules for it to look better, if that makes sense. I'm going to, so I always take, for the eyes, I always take a lighter version of that color and then put it in the eyes. So, and then for the white, it's just almost white but not quite. <laughs> So I'm actually going to make this a little bit lighter. Okay, um, so now we have that and some people shade their eyes with the top the darkest like I do and then some shade the light, light the darkest. Um, it's whatever you think looks better and some people bring the um, eyelash down like that or it's, so it can look like that um, I don't do that usually but I mean whenever other people do it, it looks good so just do whatever you think looks best I'm going to work on the rest of the outfit and show you how I shade skirts um, it's basically the same sometimes I change it up but so for this red I'm going to make it go more towards orange Which no other colors are like an orangish, so that will help with that. The contrast. So. I shade it. Sometimes I do different ways. So for this, it will only be able to fit three colors. So. I can either. Sometimes I do it like this, which I think. Or I'll do it like. That. I think I'm going to do that for this. Um, and then I feel like this is too orangey. I might not want as much as big as a hue shift here. Because you don't always have to do such a drastic color change. Just Okay, um, I think what I'm going to do is make a darker version of the red, so bring it more towards saturation, more towards red. Because I don't want it to get too orangey. And then now I'm going to take that red color right there. And then make sure that it doesn't go too orange. Sometimes 
you don't even have to hue shift because like I said you don't always want there to be like I don't really want this to be an orange I want it to go towards the orangey side but I don't want it to look orange so see how I brought it that time I brought it up instead of out so now I have my shades for this okay so now I'm done with that I'm going to carry this on over to the sides and I'm going to show you how to shade white next, which is very important in my opinion. And then the skin will be wrapped up. And I also have noticed that I forgot to make this part purple and it's bugging me a lot because there's not enough contrast. Enough contrast. So now I'm going to just add some purple right there. You always want to just double check and if something seems off, then check it to make sure that and if like I said, you don't always have to follow your shading pattern. So, okay, so to shade with white, some people use gray, and um, that's, I use gray sometimes, so <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it. Sometimes you might want to add a little bit of interest, though, and instead of shading with a, a full gray, maybe a little bit of a sandy tone, like a red, a light red. Or, uh, that's um, or a light blue. If you see some of my skin, some of, and it's just a very subtle. It's not like you you want it to still look like white, so it's not like this type of. Blue. I mean, some people can like have like extreme hue shifts and make it work. For me, I just like to keep it keep it like I don't know. Because, yeah, <laughs> for me, I like there to be hue shift, and I like there to be a difference, but I also like it to be, like, sort of still the same. Um, so, and I don't always make it an exact white, but don't be afraid to make an exact white, because, I mean, there's, it just adds that brightness that white really gives, you know, and the contrast that sometimes you need so I think I'm just gonna keep the shading like that usually I do something different but I mean I think it looks fine so okay um so now I'm just going to shade the belt and this will be like more of a sideways shading I guess okay so now I'm just going to continue the shading everywhere else on the skin and um I'll talk to you guys after I start doing the skin tone Okay guys, so um, now it's time to go on to the skin tone, which I always do last. Some of you might do f that first or second, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, usually, so where the, the, that gray is, that's where the skin goes. Because I always start with a gray base, just so I can see what kind of tones I have. Sort of helps me to see, like how my colors look next to each other and I don't have to think about the skin tone because before whenever I start with the skin tone sometimes I'll have to keep changing it because my colors change and um, like the skin develops and it doesn't go together as well so I always go I always do the skin last and then I know it goes with the rest of the skin because it touches the face um, the arms the legs like unless you have like long pants and like um, on shirts and stuff like then you might then it might just be on the face um or like the hands but for me a lot of times it's not like that so i always do skin tone last you want to try a couple skin tones because who knows you might um like a skin tone that you weren't really thinking about like i'm not i don't really think that a very light skin tone would really complement the skin well. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the darker one. So now I'm gonna create the shades around it. I only use three colors for the skin. Um, some people, people use more, some people might use less, some people yeah. might not even shade the skin. I shade the skin so then it just like feels more incorporated into it, I guess. And there's something that I do, I add like little noses to my skins. I know not a lot of people do that, um, but I do that, so. 
Uh, you don't have to do that, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to saturate that a little bit more because I don't want her to look dead. Like, you don't want a super bright skin tone in my opinion, but you don't want them to also look like they're a zombie. So, so here is my palette. I basically find the base, like I said before, like I've done for other ones, and then I do a darker and then I do a lighter. And um, that just, I don't know, that's just what I do. And I like to add like little shadows, I guess. You can just do it the, however you want to do it. There's no right or wrong way, like with anything with skinning. Um, this is just how I do it. I like to keep it like pretty simple, I guess. Like, but also where there's like some depth, like under the skirt, I added that, and then to where like the legs come together, that's I also put um, darkness there. And then, like, the dark color there. It might be the dark color. I like it, but it might be a little bit too dark compared to the other ones. So I'm going to just lighten that a little bit. Just because, compared to, like, the base color, it's a little bit... I don't want it to stand out too much, you know? I think it makes the eyebrows look a little bit better, too. If you have any other things you want to learn about, or any more questions after watching this that I wasn't clear about, then let me know in the comment section and I can make a video on it or if it's just something I can reply with, I'll reply with it on that. I'm sorry if this wasn't like a perfect video that I explained everything. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to like explain it and it's easier just to show you guys. So, um, yeah, hope you, hopefully you guys don't mind that. Um, and some things I recommend to practice shading. Um, experiment with different types of shading. Don't just stick. Well, I mean, you can stick with one, but if you're not happy with yours, there's no one telling you you have to have that shading and always stay with it. Um, and no one has to have a certain shading. If you want to change it every skin, sure. But um, I also have little ears I have in, but <laughs> and I make it darkest where the ear is. And then um, other things I recommend um, besides just experimenting, trying new shading, or having multiple shading. Um, is to enter reshade contests. Some people are too scared to enter because they're like, oh, I know I'm going to lose. Well, I, um, I have some terrible reshade contest entries, and I know I'm not going to win. But, I mean, it's about practice, and you don't even have to upload them um, at all. Like, you can just, if there's a skin you don't like, no one's telling you to upload it. But a lot of times, if you don't upload it, you don't know if people will like it or not. So, never be afraid to upload it. And if you want to share, like, uh, the, your skins with me, um, comment your skin decks or PMC name below, and I will definitely follow you, because I'm sure you have great skin. Um, and now I'm going to add overlay, and, um, if you want to see the final completed skin, make sure to check out my skin decks. Um, I'll have a link below to the skin. And make sure to check out Lila the, Lila the Fish, the host of this contest. And um, I'll have her um, profile link below since she was basically the inspiration for the skin. Um, I hope you enjoy. Bye! Mm -hmm.